Iran has reopened its airspace after confirming the failure of an attack against its territory. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas described U.S. veto of Palestine's bid to join the U.N. as a full member as immoral and unjustified. And Argentina's ultra-liberal government has been forced to give a 70% increase to specific university funds after a day of visible support to the sector. Hello and welcome to From the South. My name is Belen de los Santos and from the Telesur studios in Havana, Cuba, we begin with the news. The Iranian authorities have opened the airspace after confirming the failure of an attack against its territory. The Civil Aviation Organization reports that several flights have been reactivated. In addition to apologizing to the passengers for the inconvenience caused by the cancellation and delay of some flights, they informed that they have established a protocol to know the exact time of departures and arrivals. Thus, it is officially confirmed that the all operational restrictions imposed for security reasons have been lifted. The spokesman for the Persian Space Agency, Hossein Dalidian, reported via the social network X that several drones had been successfully shut down, while noting that no missile attacks had been recorded. And earlier on Friday, Iranian regional and military authorities confirmed that they responded to an attack with suspicious objects that flew over the airspace of Isfasan, a province in the center of the country with no damage or affectations reported. At the same time, Iranian authorities attest to the complete normality throughout the territory, in contrast to information appearing in Western media about an alleged Israeli attack. In particular, the U.S. outlet site Defense Department spokesman who confirmed that they had been aware since Thursday of the response ordered by Tel Aviv against the Persian nation. However, Israel has not officially made any statements yet. The Iranian media reiterated that there were no consummated attacks nor missile responses and that the drones were repelled with basic anti-aircraft equipment. Let's learn a bit more about what we know so far. The spokesman of the Iranian Space Agency confirmed that the air defenses intercepted three targets in the sky over the cities of Isfahan and Kawaristan in the vicinity of an army airbase activating the defense system. At the time, a precautionary measure flights in Tehran, Isfahan and Shiraf were temporarily suspended. Furthermore, local sources confirmed that there were no explosions on the ground and that the loud noises were caused by the Iranian defenses. And in this context of the Israeli attacks on the Iranian military base, our correspondent Yunus Sonar brings us an interview with Hamid Reza Golam Sadeh, Deputy for International Affairs of the Tehran City Council. Do we know what happened exactly last night? Uh, you know, we don't have uh, accurate information so, uh, so far, but uh, based on the reports and the things that we are hearing from the social media, observation of the people, and the uh, reports that are coming uh, inside Iran, is that there were some uh, actually quadcopters uh, infiltrating in, into the airspace and trying to attack a plane in Tehran, an airbase actually near Tehran, but uh, they were actually downed by the uh, defense system and the, uh, actually the recording from the people uh, on, in the city of Tehran shows that, that the, uh, the defense system is actually uh, shooting at the, some uh, targets at, at the sky during the night. And uh, the only, uh, based on the reports and the hearings from my sources in the city of Esfahan, uh, the only thing that has happened is that one of the quadcopters has hit an office building and actually has run into a window of an office uh, building, and that was the old casualty. Mm -hmm. and so we don't have any reports of uh, certain casualties. And unlike what uh, Western mainstream uh, media like uh, CNN, ABC, CBS, and such things are actually uh, reporting there have been no missile actually. How do you describe the general atmosphere right now in the city of Tehran, where you are, and in the country in general? Is there any kind of 
panic? Is there any? So we, you might not believe that, but uh, I uh, I woke up this morning uh, and read a lot of uh, funny things, making fun of this uh, so-called attack uh, because uh, they were come they are comparing actually the Iranian missiles versus these quad copters that are being used, and uh, it's uh, just a uh, atmosphere is just fun across country and they, they you, you can see in the social media and the media among the people who are talking about that everyone is just uh, laughing at the situation that has happened there. will the islamic republic of iran react to this uh, attack what... uh, iran has uh, reiterated that it's going to respond the way the any uh, sabotage or any attack or any uh, hostility would occur against it so it is a sabotage, there might be some sabotage. Iran is not going to take it very serious to launch missiles against that because as I said, it was just a a very small incident that uh, cannot be, it can be ignored actually, but it can, uh, it's not going to ignore that. It's going to be some sabotage at that same level against Israelis. Thank you very much for taking the time, uh, Dr. Golam. What do we... And the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, confirmed the versions delivered earlier in the day by the Iranian authorities on the good state of the nuclear facilities. In a message shared on his account on social network X, Rafael Grossi, director general of this organism attached to the United States nation's system, confirmed that there is no damage to nuclear sites. In this way, the international verification certifies the security of the Isfahan area and reiterated that the nuclear infrastructure should never be a target in any conflict. For their part, the Iranian air defenses reported the shooting down of three small planes with no one claiming responsibility for the aggression for the moment. And meanwhile, the president of Iran, Ebrahim Raisi, affirmed on Friday that the Operation to Promise has consolidated the strength and competence of his country. In this sense, the Iranian leader acknowledged that his country is waging a war of wills and at the same time reiterated his faith in victory while assuring that his people and all the political forces support the government's actions. On the other hand, the head of the Iranian army, Abdul Rahim Musavi, in reference to the attempted aggression in the central province of Isfanal, made it clear that Iran's strength was demonstrated in its response to the occupying entity and made no mention of future actions against Israel. Also on Friday, the French police deployed an operation in the 16th arrondissement of Paris in the vicinity of the Iranian consulate because of the presence inside the building of an individual suspected of carrying an explosive belt. In this way, French police reported that they arrested the man who threatened to blow himself up at the Iranian consulate. Reports otherwise report indicated that the man was seen entering the consulate carrying what appeared to be a grenade and an explosive vest. France is precisely at the maximum level of terrorist alert within the framework of the 100 days before the Olympics. Otherwise, this incident comes amidst tension between Iran and Israel. In addition, that on Friday, French President Emmanuel Macron had a meeting with Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikati to discuss tensions in the region. We go now to the latest in Palestine. President Mahmoud Abbas has described as immoral and unjustified the veto exercise by the United States on Thursday against his country's accession as a full member of the United Nations. Washington's decision, known in advance due to a U.S. media leak, has prevented Palestine from ceasing to be a mere observer and gaining full membership in the United Nations. 139 countries around the world have considered Palestine to be entitled to this right, which is why the Palestinian president accuses the Biden administration of practicing an aggressive policy and, more seriously, of violating international humanitarian law, as its decision will lead to the continuation of the genocidal operation against the Palestinian people. 
Meanwhile, in Palestine, during the 195th day of bombardment against the Gaza Strip, Israel has killed almost 34,000 Palestinians, while the number of civilians wounded exceed the 77,000. The occupation forces attacked the east, south and southwest zones of the city of Gaza, where they perpetrated multiple massacres and illegal arrests. The Palestinian authorities stressed that the civil defense does not stop in its efforts to recover the bodies of the martyrs who remain under the rubble despite the Israeli bombardment, especially in the places where thousands of displaced people take refuge. Now let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates and much more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. On Thursday in Argentina, after an intense day of protest in support of the education sector, the government of Malay was forced to announce a 70% increase in the operating budget of universities. Specifically, the Ministry of Human Capital reported a 70% increase in funding and also anticipated a similar increase for the month of May. In turn, the vice-rector of the University of Buenos Aires, Emiliano Jacobiti, clarified that it was only an informal proposal and insisted that it was insufficient to maintain the functioning of the university system. On the other hand, the National Inter-University Council emphasized the willingness to make an offer, but in the meantime expressed that the organization does not consider the conflict closed and meanwhile ratified a call to the mobilization set for April 23rd. On the other hand, cinema workers will march on Friday to the National Institute of Cinema and Visual Arts in Argentina, the INCA, in Buenos Aires in its defense and in repudiation of the measures taken by the government of President Javier Milei. This new rally against the libertarian measures is called by the staff of the Cine Argentino Unido, or United Argentinian Cinema. From there, they denounced the attempts of the executive to destroy culture, according to their statement, as it has already done with education and public health. After announcing the formalization and paralysis of historic institute for the Ever-American Cinematographic Arts, the government unfolded the emptying of the promotion area, a fact considered by the staff as a brutal blo blow to the reason for the existence of this institute. In Argentina, the Ministry of Defense informed that the government presented an application to become a member state of NATO. In response to the request, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Deputy Secretary General Mircea Joana indicated that closer political and practical cooperation could benefit both sides. Meanwhile, the U.S. Embassy in Argentina announced that the United States will provide $40 million in foreign military financing to support modernizing Argentina's defense, which it said would acquire defense products, training services and F-16 fighter jets. And the meeting for a world social alternative advances in Venezuela with the participation of 500 delegations of social movement leaders and activists who are united against imperialism. The meeting is convened by the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America, People's Trade Agreement, ALBA TCP, and the Simón Bolívar Institute of Venezuela. It takes place from April 18th to April 19th. Over 500 national and international guests participate in the event, which aims to analyze the threat imposed by imperialism. During the meeting, the executive secretary of ALBA TCP, Jorge Arreaza, affirmed that imperialism tries to prolong what is destined to die and that there is no time for pettiness.
On Thursday, Venezuela and Vietnam strengthened their strategic alliance with the signing of five cooperation agreements covering the agricultural, telecommunications, oil and gas sectors. In this way, from the city of Caracas, the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, and the deputy prime minister of Vietnam, Trang Lu Quang, ratified their commitment to advance the integral and economic development of both nations. Among the agreements signed are the construction of a new glass industry in Venezuela, the signing of cooperation agreements for the agricultural production, with the aim of promoting and development tra training and technical scientific and technological support. We have signed a strategic alliance for the construction of a new glass industry in Venezuela with a significant investment to produce for Venezuela, for South America, for the Caribbean and for the world. We have signed a comprehensive work plan for Vietnam to support us even more in agricultural production. We have reached. As I was telling Comrade Tran Lu Quang, Venezuela, this year reaches 100% of production of all food consumed in Venezuela, at home, 100%, historical record, first time in 100 years. In other news, Ecuador enters its second day of holiday decree to a national energy crisis in just days ahead of a popular consultation proposed by President Daniel Novoa. Let's listen to all the latest from the side with our correspondent Elena Rodriguez. Hello comrades, what a pleasure to greet you. Today in Ecuador is the second day of holiday decreed by the President Daniel Noboa. Let us remember that both Thursday and Friday by executive decree the President of this country Daniel Noboa decreed a national holiday. And although he did not explain the reasons for this decision, it coincides with the energy crisis that the country is experiencing and with the popular consultation that will take place this Sunday, April 21st. When 13.6 million Ecuadorians must go to the polls to answer 11 questions posed by the executive that deal with security, labor relations, hourly and fixed-term contracts and also international arbitration. The president in recent public statements has said that the energy crisis that the country is experiencing, which has practically paralyzed this South American nation with electricity suspension days ranging from 8 to 13 hours a day, is due to an alleged boycott. To sabotage, although he has not specified who would be behind it. Yesterday, in public statements, precisely this Thursday, he said that he would give the names of those who would be behind this boycott, this sabotage. According to experts, the energy crisis is not due to such sabotage but rather to the drought, to the lack of rainfall that has been recorded in the last few weeks in this South American nation. Although the Secretary of Communication, Roberto Igerieta, said that one of the dams, Mazar, one of the most important dams for electricity generation, had been intentionally emptied. Technicians have denied this version, they have said that this is impossible and that it responds to the ignorance of public officials. We must also say that the president gave a list of 22 people, among them public officials and former public officials and even his former minister of energy, who were supposedly behind this sabotage. In any case, it is expected that in the next few hours, after the rains registered during the early hours of this morning, new measures may be announced and it is expected that Ecuadorians will know if the power cuts will continue for eight hours. This is the information so far. We now have a final show break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and also share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final show break, don't go away.
Welcome back to From the South. The government of China rejected the deployment of medium-range missiles by the United States in the Philippine island of Luzon. In this regard, Foreign Ministry spokesman Li Yang indicated that the installation of artillery as part of the military exercise by the U.S. military, together with the Philippine troops, seeks a unilateral military advantage in the Asia-Pacific with the aim of affecting the stability of the Asian giant. Lin Jiang urged the Philippines not to sacrifice its security interests for the sake of strengthening a military alliance with Washington. In Thailand, at least 160 people are reported injured after an ammonia leak at an ice factory in Jongburi province. Local authorities indicated that due to the ammonia leak, the nearby population experienced eye and nasal irritation and loss of consciousness. They also reported that workers and the local population within a two-kilometer area were evacuated. Meanwhile, safety authorities say that the situation is under control and warn that the population to warn the population to avoid consuming food exposed to ammonia. In the Netherlands, the 2024 World Press Photo of the Year Award was given on Thursday to a picture of a grieving Palestinian woman hugging the body of her little niece killed in the Israeli attack in the Gaza Strip. The 2024 award-winning photo was taken by Mohamed Salem of the Reuters News Agency. The photo shows Inas Abu Mamar cradling the body of five-year-old Sally, who died along with her mother and sister after a missile hit their home in Khan Yunis in southern Gaza just 10 days after the start of the ongoing Israeli genocide. The winning photos in this year's edition were selected from 61,000 works and photographers from 130 countries. The photos will be exhibited in a 15th century church in the center of Amsterdam until July 14th. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at tellusringlish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and also on TikTok. For Tell Us English, my name is Belen de los Santos. Thank you for watching.